All right, hello and welcome to another Expert Inside interview. My name is John Golden from Sales Pop Online, Sales Magazine and Pipeliner CRM. And today I'm joined by Joe Calloway, who is in lovely Nashville, Tennessee. How are you doing, Joe? I'm doing great, John. And Joe uh, helps people and consults and coaches people on creating their own next successes. Uh, Joe's had a great track record. We were just talking before we came on air. He was once the proud owner of one of the three hippest restaurants in America. Clearly, I was never there because then it, that would have brought that down for sure. <laughs> <laughs> um, and you had that for 10 years, which uh, if anybody knows the statistics on restaurant uh, success yes. slash failure will know that that's pretty impressive. Um, yeah. Served as executive residence, Belmont University Center for Entrepreneurship, uh, is a, a consultant with the Disruption Lab. And today we want to talk about how to take steps to your next success. So when you talk to people about their next success, Joe, what, what do you mean by that? Well, you know, it's interesting. The, the people that I work with are people that are, are already successful. It's not people that are struggling and it's not working and they're looking for a way out. These are people that are doing quite well, but there's something in them that that they either want to take what they're doing and really bump it up to a whole new level, or they they want to possibly even leave what they're doing. I'm, I'm working with a couple of entrepreneurs right now whose businesses are doing quite well, but they've gotten to the point where they can kind of run themselves. They've mm -hmm. got other people that can do the day to day. And these folks are looking for, okay, what's my next thing? Sometimes, John, it, it's, people that are successful and quite frankly, they're just starting to get a little bit bored. Yeah. It's kind of the, you know, been there, done that, what's next. Yeah. So that's the, that's the group that I'm with people that are doing well and looking for the next thing. I think in um, key in what you're saying there, as I was just taking a note is that it's interesting, especially with entrepreneurs or, or people who are builders, right? They love yeah. to build when it's built they're they're not maintainers right so i exactly. think i think part of it is you have to know yourself are you a builder or are you a maintainer yeah and sometimes and you know this mm -hmm. the builders are not not the best people to maintain sure. that's that's a different skill set and it requires a different mindset and so they're looking for the next thing that that they can build um it, it, it's I, i'm i'm one of those people i've always loved the next idea that can work against you though if you're too if you're just easily distracted <laughs> <laughs> and it's funny you should say that because i've been having this conversation recently and i think that's one of the biggest issues that we have today because we people we complain all the time oh, we're busier than we've ever been and i go no we're not we're more distracted than we've ever been let's be yeah. honest we're, Good we're point. so how do you help people actually cut through the noise and focus on uh is this the right time for me to take my next yeah. move? Am I getting distracted? Is that distraction like hurting the whatever enterprise I'm in right now? You know, one of the things that I do in going through this process with people, and a lot of times they'll come to me and say, okay, I've got the idea. I just need somebody to help me think it through and strategize and start to take action steps. And one of the things that we do is very, very basic, which is kind of look at the the, the three legs on the three-legged stool, which is one, uh, this thing that you want to do, are you good at it? <laughs> <laughs> do you have the skills? Do you have the knowledge? Or do you need to go get the skills and the knowledge? So that's one part of it. Number two, is it something that you truly would love to do? Is this something that when you wake up in the morning, you can be excited about? And number three, and this is a big one. Is there a market for it? Mm -hmm. You know, there, there are, there are a lot of motivational people that say, well, just follow your passion. If you follow your passion, you're bound to be successful. Yeah. If somebody's willing to pay you to do it. Yeah. Yeah. But, no, I, I agree. I mean, I have a few passions in, in my life that I know nobody would pay me to pursue and would never going to put bread on my table. <laughs> yeah, me too. And in that case, that's fine. You can do it as a hobby. Exactly. You know, you can do it as an avocation rather mm -hmm. than a vocation. But a lot of the work that I do is to help people, as I said earlier, 
think it through and get focused to the point where they can then go, okay, what are the three things that I need to do right now to get this ball rolling? Mm -hmm. And so it's really just moving from concept to action. And it's interesting how often, and I'm exactly the same way. I worked with a coach just a couple of weeks ago who who got me out of the thinking it through process. (laughs) And he pretty much forced me to put on paper, okay, here's the steps I need to take. And that's what I needed. Yeah, and it's and it's interesting um, you say that because uh, you're having come up with the concept, as you say, is great and thinking it through. But the minute you put down those action steps on paper, you've kind of made a commitment, right? Yeah, you really have. Um, and uh, sometimes the commitment is to go public, mm-hmm. uh, to to put up the website or write a hundred of of the people in your sphere in your network and say, this is what I'm doing. Uh, and and when, when you make a, an announcement to the world, it starts to motivate you to, to do something about it. Um, you know, we also work on, on for, with a lot of people, some of the obstacles that can get in your way. And one of those, and we've been kind of dancing around it, is, to, is we tend to overthink. Mm-hmm. And I'm as guilty as anybody. I may be guiltier than most people. Instead of just getting on with it, we overthink it uh, because we want to analyze analyze our way to making it perfect before we launch it, and that that's a bad strategy. Well, I, I agree one hundred percent, and and perfection's in, is unattainable anyway. I mean, it's right. it's unattainable, unattainable. I don't know. I'll need to check that one later, but it's uh, it can't be attained. How about that? Uh, and therefore, I often think that if you, you know perfectionist or perfectionism is actually it's in many ways it's a get out of jail card because if you're a perfectionist, you never have to deliver because because no, it's never perfect. So therefore, it's a kind of a way of getting out of putting yourself out there. There's an there's an old saying, and a good friend of mine, a very successful entrepreneur, wrote a book based on this. And the old saying is, if it's worth doing, it's worth doing wrong. <laughs> meaning, yeah, it, real. It's what you were just talking about. Meaning, if you wait until you think it's going to be perfect, you'll never do it. Mm-hmm. So the idea is, do it, do it wrong, and then do it better. Because when you ship it, when you launch it, the market starts to give you very useful information. <laughs> yeah, and the the most interesting thing about whether it's a software product or probably your restaurant or whatever is yeah. that. Issues are going to come up or customers are going to use your product in a way that you never imagined. Yes. So you can't legislate or test for that. I work with a lot of startups and, and I can tell them almost 100% of the time, okay, here's the direction. You've got absolute clarity. You're going to do this. I guarantee you, you're going to change direction once it hits the market because you're exactly right. The market will give you feedback and it's, it's, Interesting to me and fun for me, the number of times I've worked with a startup or a young company and they've said, well, we thought we were going to do this, but boom, we we took a turn. Mm -hmm. And you don't know that until the market gives you feedback. Exactly. So that's why you, you you have to, at some point, you have to put that stake in the ground and, and yeah. get out there and do it. Uh, one of the things that I just wanted to come back to is because uh, we were talking about, um, you know, knowing what you're good at and uh, getting out of your head and getting things down. I, I always find that self-awareness is one of the toughest things. I, you can't teach somebody self-awareness. And if you don't have good self-awareness, it can be so limiting. So um, talk to me a little bit about how do you help? Like I said, you can't teach people, but you can certainly guide them in the direction of maybe self-reflection is a good thing before you dive into something. You can. And one of the things that I do that's that's helpful, has been helpful for a lot of my clients is we we get so entrenched in doing what we're good at. Mm -hmm. And one of the things I've told people forever, and, and I've been guilty of it myself, don't get stuck doing something you're good at. We develop a certain set of skills. We get really good at that. We can do it with one arm tied behind our back. And we start to think, well, this, this is what I do. This is what I know how to do. 
And the thing is, we, we've usually got a lot of other underlying transferable kinds of skills. It's like, no, that's not all that you're good at. It's just, it's what you've been doing mm -hmm. for a long time. And so what I do with people, and a lot of the times it's just through conversation of going back and looking at successive that the successes that they've had and starting to identify, well, you know, it looks like you're not just good at this, you're also good at that. And it could be that you could start to focus on that set of skills that's been in the background all this time. Bring that to the forefront, and that could help you launch a whole new endeavor. But you're right, self-awareness is tough. It, it's hard to see things with a perspective other than the one that we've developed over years. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I'm, 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 we're kind of very good at kidding ourselves and fooling ourselves into thinking things about ourselves that may not be 100% true. Um, Very good. But I like, I like that idea, though, of, of uh, helping people break out of comfort zones, because you're correct. I mean, we, we get good at something. It's a comfort zone. It's nice to do. Um, but we're restricting the potential we have to make big impacts elsewhere unless we try to, to break out of that and try some other things. I, I'm, I'm a classic case, uh, John. I, I mean, I've been up, I've been a speaker for corporate events for 35 years, up in front of huge rooms of people. Well, okay, that's what I do. Except, I would have people like a CEO of a company or an entrepreneur. After they heard me speak, they'd say, "Could you work with me just one on one? Because I really like your ideas." And I would do a little of that. But I didn't pursue it because that's not what I do. Right. Well, just recently, I took speaking off the table, mm -hmm. which was a huge move for me. It's what I've always done, in addition to some other things. And now I'm focusing on this one-on-one -on -one or very, very small group coaching. And it's funny, my wife told me, she said, I always thought you were better at that the whole time <laughs> than you were at speaking to the big groups. She said, I just think you've got a real talent for working with people one-on-one. -on -one. But I had never really, I hadn't had the self-awareness to see that as a strength. It was just something that I did every now and then. Yeah, it's interesting. Well, yeah, kudos to your wife. You see, we should listen more to our significant <laughs> others, right? Exactly. <laughs> uh, and then when you're when you're helping people with their with their next success, right? Um, how often do you come across maybe the issue that people have that they may have been successful once, but they start to have the doubt about whether they can do it a second time? Yeah, they do. You know, there's there's two or three things going on. A lot of it is what we've just been talking about. And I, I think, you know, it's it's interesting. We, we would rather, when I say we, I mean almost everybody, mm -hmm. even when things start to not work as well as we feel like they should, we'll stay with that because it's more comfortable being <laughs> with something that's not working, but we're, we're, we're familiar with it. Mm -hmm. That's more comfortable than taking a leap into an arena that we're unfamiliar with. And we'll, we'll stay on the same path until the discomfort of that becomes greater than the fear of moving on to something else. I mean, that's just a classic yeah. human behavior characteristic. But you're right. There are a lot of people who are so talented, and yet they doubt that they – it's like – I pulled this off once, maybe twice. I, I don't know if I can do it again. <laughs> well, you'll never know if, if you don't try. There, there's a metaphor that I love, which is you have to turn the page to see what's in the rest of the book. Uh, that's <laughs> and, very true. I love that. It's like you don't know what else is there until you're willing to turn the page and let go. But letting go can be a scary thing. Yeah, well, it's always interesting to me about this human aversion to change, right? And we we don't like change and we try, especially uh, for some reason at work, you know, we try to keep everything neatly organized. But life isn't like that. Life is constant flux and it's change and it throws things at you from out of left field constantly. But yet at the same time, we... We, we get we try so hard to control things rather than be a little bit more adventurous. 
Yeah, we do. I, you mentioned that I'm with a group called the Disruption mm-hmm. Lab, and there's a great challenge for companies that are doing extremely well. I'm talking about big companies. Yeah. They're doing extremely well, but they know that they've got to disrupt themselves. So how do you sustain your present success while at the same time pursuing something that might put you out of business? Yeah. The thing is, if something puts you out of business, you want it to be you, not something else, not a competitor. But it it is a challenge to sustain present success while at the same time creating what might be a, a totally new avenue of success. And that's true not just for big companies, but individuals and entrepreneurs and solo practitioners. Sure, absolutely. Uh, um, you know, back when I was um, running Hathwaite uh, Spin Selling, we worked with a company that was a, a global market leader, multi-billion dollar company who were by far the market leader in what they did. There was nobody even close to them. And they were doing great, doing great crushing the numbers every year. But to your point, the CEO uh, working with the, the head of sales said, you know something, we need to prepare our salespeople for the future. So we need to make them even better. And he invested in this. And, you know, at first the salespeople were like, we're, we're all crushing our quotas. Why are exactly. we, why are you doing a performance improvement initiative? Yeah, and that's true. I've, I've worked over the years with many companies that the, the, the biggest obstacle that they faced was, and this is getting into cliches, sure. but it's so true. The biggest obstacle to their future success was their present success. Exactly. Because it's like, nothing's wrong here. <laughs> <laughs> You're trying to make repairs. Everything's fine. And yet, I mean, we all know, read the business page every day. Uh, businesses are being disrupted. There's constant upheaval in the marketplace. And so we, we've got to always be looking for what's the next thing? Mm. What's the next business that I should be in looking down the road? Yeah, and uh, and get, and kind of circling back to the beginning, you know, your next success is that's what you should be thinking about. What is my next success going to be and yeah. how am I going to achieve it? Well, listen, Joe, uh, before we end today, I'd like to give you an opportunity to tell people a little bit more about yourself, how they can learn more about you and the types of services you offer. Well, everything is is on the website, which is just my name, joecalloway.com. Callaway is C-A-L-L-O-W-A-Y. One thing we've got on there that's kind of fun, we've got a pretty cool blog on there mm-hmm. uh, that, that we get a lot of good response to. So everybody's welcome to to visit the blog. My email is right on the homepage. So I welcome any kind of feedback or questions or ideas from anybody. But if, if they go to joecalloway.com, uh, they'll see the books, they'll see all about my coaching, and they'll know everything there is to know. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. Well, Joe, this has been fascinating. And I would encourage people to go to joecalloway.com and, and learn more. My name is John Golden, Sales Pop Online Sales Magazine. Joe, it's been a pleasure. I'll see you all for another expert interview really soon. Thank you.